Hello friends, thank you for uh, joining me for today's uh, cichlids and coffee. <laughs> and uh, wherever you are, I hope you're having a nice cup of coffee. Or if it's much later, perhaps it's uh, cichlids and suds for you. And uh, let's see, we have a good crowd already here. Let's take a look here. Cat Sailor, T-Bone. Hey, T-Bone, I see you got here early. T-Bone, if you don't have some stickers, send me your, uh, send me your address to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. I'll get you some stickers for being the early bird. And uh, it looks like you got in about an hour early, so of course you were alone for a little while. <laughs> All right. So welcome to Cichlids and Coffee. Today we have... Uh, some interesting things to talk about, some things that have gone on, and some things that are coming up. And uh, welcome to James Green, and of course, Cat Sailor. And let's see who else we got on here. Hey, Posiwi, hello. And uh, GP, hello, GP, how are you, buddy? Yeah, big shout out and a big thank you to the moderators. Recently, it's been GP and uh, Candy. I think Candy, if she's not on already, will be joining us very shortly. So, um, so it's in, so it's in, in in your hands, GP. Video feed looks good. Thank you so much for that input. That's important to me. And uh, a little bit of a different angle today, uh, different lighting setup. I'm always experimenting. And uh, Posey, we got her coffee mug yesterday. All right. Cheers. Cheers to you. Uh, send me a picture. Send me a picture in front of your tank, drinking from the coffee mug, and I'll go ahead and. Uh, share it on the live stream how's that we can put a face with the with the name i have uh new mugs and uh, these mugs are um are depicting certain fish that i've had over the years and uh if you go to the uh, teespring website you'll see them and if you go to teespring and i hope you did this posee and didn't forget use a uh, live stream use live stream at checkout and uh, you'll get a 10% discount on whatever it is, whatever it is that you pick up. So um, let's see who else is here. Michael Machos, Michael. Yep, share with your friends. Tell them that we have started because we are going to get underway. And remember, if you're new, be sure to hit that 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 sub button, and uh, and that bell so you get notifications. That's always a good thing. And again, like I said earlier, visit the store if you want some of the uh, some of the merchandise merchandise that supports the channel, and use live stream at checkout for 10% discount. And also, don't forget about the Amazon store, where uh, I put a lot of the products that I use and recommend. And if you go there with that link, the Amazon link, and then bounce off and get something else, the channel will get a little bit of credit. So it doesn't increase your price. So it's a great way to support the channel. And I appreciate you folks that have done that. I noticed some of you have actually done that. I also noticed that a lot of you uh, watch but don't subscribe. And uh, that's okay. I know you're not ready for a serious commitment. I understand. I'm not quite ready to subscribe yet, so I get it. <laughs> Hit that sub button if you'd like. And let's take a look at uh, what's been going on. And what I did recently was I, I re every now and then I review the top 10 videos that were um, the top 10 videos from all time. Like, OK, what's gotten the most views? And, and I compile a list that's available to you um, as, as top 10 videos of all time. It's, it's just a list on my playlist. I have several playlists, uh, you know, disease, aggression water changes. Uh, I have about a dozen playlists and one of them is most watched uh, videos. And uh, so I was redoing it. And as I was doing it, it became uh, very obvious to me. Uh, by the way, that playlist comprises 1.3 million views between the top 10, which is great. I mean, there's some YouTubers that get 1.3 million on one video, but uh, 1.3 million views for 10 videos. That, that for me, that's for this channel. That's really good. Um, 
but at any rate, the the uh, what jumped out at me in compiling that list was that there are certain topics that uh, the viewers seem to be very interested in, and uh, so the ones that jumped out at me, I I, I decided to put together a series of uh, of videos that talk to the most popular topics. Now, I already did one uh, that was released on filtration, and you probably saw that one. And uh, let's talk filtration. That one uh, was a video based on that top 10 list because uh, filtration was just a, a very popular topic, whether it was general ideas about filtration, uh, discussions on canisters, uh, putting together how to put together a canister, uh, how to... Uh, you know, what media, things of this nature. So um, so the Let's Talk Filtration video, it's been pretty popular. It's gotten, uh, it got over 3,000 views right away. So that's a good sign for a video. And let's, let's see how that, one, how that one does. I also uh, did a little bit of a stock report, which is something I do. Excuse me, and someone pointed out that I missed, I, I didn't in the, in the fish that I, was, that I was covering, I missed the uh, Super Red Empress. So uh, this is officially a correction to that video. The Super Red Empress was not, was not noted. It's on the thumbnail. The Super Red Empress is right featured on the thumbnail, but not in the video. For some reason, got missed. It was probably hiding in the plants, in the artificial plants. But uh, I, I like these videos, and this is one of the reasons I recommend that folks get onto YouTube, even if they don't do it uh, as, a, as a sort of semi-professional hobby, just throw videos up there because it gives you an ongoing video record of your stock. And I can go back in about three years and look and say, wow, look how much that fish has grown. Or, um, oh gee, I missed that fish. Look how pretty he was, you know, when you lose a fish. So I have this ongoing stock report and I have a playlist called, you know, stock report, every fish stock report. And uh, so it, it covered the fish in the 150. It got, it got a decent amount of views for that kind of video. And probably the most popular video last week was the uh, hidden gem, the hidden gem uh, tour of the uh, of the local fish store that I went to, and uh, uh, just a great shop, kind of sleepy looking outside, kind of tired looking. Uh, when you go inside, it's like oh my goodness! I mean the stuff that he had in there and the the collection of discus and um, his flower horn collection. Uh, it was just it was just awesome. His saltwater fish were beautiful. His collection of corals was beautiful. Uh, just a, a great, a great little shop, not that far from me, probably 40 minutes from where I live. And uh, definitely a place I'd like to go back to a place that I really wish I had known about when I was keeping discus, because he had discus at all sizes. He had them, you know, the size of, of uh, you know, half dollars, all the way up to dinner plates, you know, and, and of course, the prices are much higher, but uh, for the bigger ones, but he had, you know, you could dial in at any level in discus keeping, and he just had beautiful fish there. So I was really, really impressed. So uh, these walkthrough videos are, are very, very popular. I'm probably going to be going to uh, Daniel's here in Montrose again. Uh, he invited me. Uh, we talked about it, invited me back because he said the first time I stopped in, he, he was in the middle of sort of cleaning things. And so he said, look, come back after I've got everything, you know, up, up to speed. And so I'm going to go back there. So I'll have another walkthrough for you probably in the next two or three weeks. And that's a local shop that that kind of went down the tubes when he uh, sold it or had someone else watch it while he went off and did something else. Uh, the place was horrible. I, I hated even going in there. The tanks were dirty. The fish didn't look good. And uh, he took it back over, and, it, and it's really, really, really improved. And uh, you can tell. You can tell the care factor is back. The fish are beautiful. And uh, so I'll be going back there. I'll give you a walkthrough of, uh, of, of that shop in the next, uh, in the next few days, uh, probably the next couple of weeks. Uh, another change that occurred just recently is I had to take this guy, my OB, I had to remove him from the 100, and you'll see in tomorrow's video why, I'll talk about why. But, um, you know, it's not uncommon if you have OBs and you have a peaceful one, I think you're lucky. I believe they do have some Mabuna blood in them. And uh, whenever you get these hybrids, they can be a little wild uh, from my experience, you know, dragon bloods, things like that. And um, he put on some size, you can see, he put on some, you know, he got a little thicker, a little bigger, 
and uh, he started to bully some fish. And I noticed that some fish had their tails uh, shredded up a little bit. So I pulled him out, and he is now in this tank behind me. So let's see how he does, uh, how he does with the big boys and uh, fish that he doesn't really overwhelm or can't push around anymore. Let's see how he does in that tank. And you can probably see him behind me. You'll see him from time to time swim by. He actually, he actually did okay. I put him in there. The lights were off. Uh, you know, usually when I add fish, I turn the lights off. So everybody kind of chills. Then when the lights come on, it, it's like, you know, they don't even notice really. But sometimes they do. But this, this, uh, but this guy just sort of started hanging around. And he, he seems to be okay. He's hanging around in the upper corner right now. And uh, he's getting chased a little bit. But he's doing a lot better than some new fish that I've added. Uh, next week, I'm going to talk about uh, food. I'm going to talk about some people are asking about food, how often, how much, what do I use? And so I, I'm, I released a video on, I'm going to be releasing a video on food. I'm also releasing a video on a filter that I reviewed. It's a filter that, that, that sticks to the back or to the side of your tank and it aerates the tank. And uh, I really like it. I really like that filter. I was going to release that video tomorrow but I'm waiting for a discount code from the from the uh, manufacturer, from the distributor. And they told me they're they're running real low in stock. I guess it's a real popular filter. I mean, it's under thirty bucks. And it moves a lot of water. It aerates. It uh, has sponges and charcoal. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a nice unit. And uh, so they're they're selling out, I guess. And uh, so he wanted to wait till he had more stock before he gave me the code. So I'm going to have a discount code for you. The discount code will probably be like 5%, 10%. So it's like a buck or two, if that's important to you. If, if you want to go ahead and look at the filter, you can go to my Amazon uh, store because I've gone ahead and put the product in the Amazon store, the Expertmatic, Expertmatic uh, filter. And um, you can take a look at it. And uh, unless you want to wait for a dollar, two dollars, impossible savings. But... Um, Anyway, I, I did a review on it. I put it together. I, I walked through the whole process. I install it. And it's running right now in the tank behind me in the back corner. And uh, you really can't see it because it's behind the overflow box. I was going to hook up the 704B because I added all these other fish. So I thought I'd, I'd put in more water movement, more filtration. and uh, But they sent me this filter, and it's great. It's very low fuss and... Uh, you know, all things considered, it's probably it's probably pushing as much water uh, when you figure in the how water slows down when you add in all the filtration, uh, all the media. It really slows down uh, the the gallons per hour, and so um, this this smaller unit is probably pushing as much water as that fully loaded 704B possibly. So uh, I also have a video uh, again pulling from the subjects, uh, pulling from the subjects of the top ten list. I have a video coming out on water changes. Water changes are a real popular subject. One of my, one of my, one of the fastest um, videos that has climbed that top ten list is the uh, water change disasters video, and um, and so that's a very very popular subject. So I get into why I do water changes and how I do water changes for reasons that are a little different than, uh, than what most people think. I actually do them for, uh, for reasons that are a little bit different. They're, they're not, I don't do water changes just for nitrate reduction. I do them for uh, several other reasons. And in this video, I get into the five reasons uh, why I'm currently uh, uh, continuing a uh, regular schedule of water changes. And so uh, look for that video. I think, I think the uh, water changes will probably be out Tuesday. I think fish, no, I think maybe water changes will be, maybe tomorrow's water changes. And then Tuesday is the uh, fish food. And then we'll shoot for Thursday for the uh, filter, for the filter review, which again, you can look at that filter right now at the amazon.com uh, slash shop slash Ben Ochart. So you can uh, look at it at the Amazon store. So uh, that's what's, what's been happening and what's coming up. 
let's talk a little bit about today's topic, but let me see if any of you have any any questions for me. I'm going to go into the chat here. I'm just going to scan the chat real quick. I don't look at the chat uh, during the, you know, during a, a lot of the stream because it can be a little bit distracting, you know that. Um, so uh, I want to go back and look over it. And if some of you, if one of you did a super chat, I thank you. And I certainly missed it because I wasn't looking. Uh, super chats are ways of supporting the channel by throwing a little money at it during the uh, live stream. You, you can do that at the bottom of the uh, of the comments in case you don't know what a super chat is. Hey, Mark. Mark from Holland. Thank you for uh, sitting in. I, I, uh, I've never been, but I'd love to go to your country. Looks like a beautiful place from the pictures I've seen. Uh, hello, R. Baglio and Tony Stark. Stark, uh, Tony Stark from, from Stark Industries. Let's see here. Hey, Jade. Jade says I'm gone. Okay. See you, Jade. Let's see here. Here's Tom in Malibu. Hey, Tom. All right. So let's go ahead and get back into it. And certainly if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the... Uh, in the list now my my favorite fish are probably going to be a, a little bit uh different a little different uh from the ones that you expect if you if you want to make a guess if you want to guess what you think my favorite fish is i'll tell you what um if you're on the chat if you guess and you're the first one to guess correctly um i'll, I'll, I'll send you something maybe some media maybe uh maybe i'll send you some uh some elite cichlids, artificial plants, if you want them. If you're the first one to guess on the chat what my favorite, favorite fish is, I'll go ahead and do that. So go ahead and guess, and uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And what what made a fish my favorite fish had more to do with, um, let me adjust the, adjust the angle here. What made a fish my favorite fish it had more to do with with um, it. It had to do with with certainly with things like color. Uh, had to do with, but had to do a lot with with attitude and temperament. Like the um, like, what's the overall the the overall temperament? How the fish interacts with me, uh, and and certainly color. Color had something to do with it. And also, you know, how the, how the fish has been over time. And um, after going over the list, especially the third place, third place is, a, is, is sort of a tie between several fish. And, uh, and I, think, I think in third place, there's, there's several fish like, like, like this Johnson, Johnson eye. This is a Placidochromis, beautiful fish, uh, a ruby red uh, fish I left off this list, unfortunately, I forgot. Well, like the white lips has to be on this list. Um, this is a Taiwan reef that I raised up from a baby. Uh, some of these fish are no longer with me, and um, you know they've passed on. But uh, certainly, Vinny, Vinny's got to be on the list. And uh, Buddy's at number three, uh, even though you know love this fish to death. But uh, and also my eye biter. I mean, another fish that that I love like crazy. But uh, but you know, o over time. I mean, they've been great fish. I mean, the yellow benga uh, that I picked up from uh, Wonder of Cichlids. The eye biter is from James Largo at the Cichlid Check. And so is this uh, uh, Bicolor 500. So there was a, a, a tie for third. There was a tie for third. And uh, between these fish, the uh, uh, blue neon, I, I just couldn't decide. I couldn't decide what would be a single third place fish. Okay, the Malawi trout's on there. Some of these fish you probably thought would be number one. And certainly watching that Malawi trout uh, go from a little gray fish into the beast he's become, uh, watching this, this Jalo reef uh, grow, you know, grow and put on color, I mean, it's been a tremendous experience. Um, second place, in second place is a fish that's going to probably surprise you. 
and that is the uh, sand diver. Now, why would I pick a sand diver? Uh, first of all, as they, as this fish has has uh, grown up, I mean, I got him again as a little gray, uh, a little gray fish. Didn't know if it was a male or female. It was just one of those, you know, take your chances. And uh, actually got him from Tampa Bay Cichlids uh, as a replacement fish for a fish that turned out to be a female, a guaranteed male. Which, anyway, uh, you know, when they're an inch, I don't know how you can guarantee anything. But uh, this was a replacement fish, and he came, and I, and as he started to color up, uh, and I realized it was a male. It was just very, very exciting, and I, I really love. A sand diver because as you can see here they never stop they're like the energizer bu bunny they don't really mess with anybody they just want to they're, they're just this sort of goofy fish that just swims around all day a little bit like a bucochromus bucochromus can be a little bit more uh, aggressive at times but it's been my experience that these eye biter i mean these uh these uh, sand divers they they just like to swim around they just like to go around and and and, and have fun and as they start to color up, they become absolutely spectacular. And um, you can Google, uh, you know, an adult sand diver. They're just crazy. No two of them are the same. <clears throat> they're all they're all different. And um, and as I've experienced with a prior sand diver that I've had, if you ever see one go into the sand, where only their eye and and their you know their fin is sticking out, and they're moving their fin and their eye is looking out but they're totally under the sand. It is, it's hilarious, absolutely hilarious. And, um, and just very, very cute. So for that reason, uh, sand diver has to be at the top of my list. Uh, what about that hawk, that super red empress? You know, that, that uh, long nose back there, the Fusco. I mean, I love them all, but uh, you know, when you look at temperament, attitude, uh, the explosion of color that occurs as they get older, uh, and the fact that they actually will go into the sand, I think that's awesome. So let's take a look at see if anybody has guessed the number one. Yeah, the sand diver, um, uh, Donald uh, Fish Five, the sand diver uh, colored down, which is not uncommon when you move a fish to a tank with much bigger fish. Uh, it, it's not uncommon for the fish to calm down or to color down and to be a little bit uh, invisible. That's not that uncommon. I suspect that it'll start to come back uh, as he puts on a little bit more size, gets a little more confident. Nobody seems to be picking on him. And also the fact that he's on a white substrate as opposed to a black substrate. That might be also contributing to him uh, shifting over in the direction of lighter colors. Not uncommon. All right, so let's see here what you folks guessed. Dan Lopez, how long? I don't know. I don't know, Dan. I mean, um, uh, the Malawi fish can live, I think, in captivity. I think if you had one go five years, it'd be pretty good. Maybe 10. I know frontosis can go 20 or 30 years. But, um, you know, it depends. I mean, let's say you buy one. He's already a good size. He's probably a, a couple years old already. So if you get, you know, four or five years out of him, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. T-Bone guesses the trout. Uh, Posiwi, the trout or eye biter. Donald Fish Vibes, you're better. I'm going to have to go out and buy a better. A uh, trout, living stone eye. Love that living stone eye. And the polystigma I used to have. Oh, man, I used to love that polystigma. Uh, unfortunately, he got he got beat up and didn't make it. Uh, Cat Slater, Vinny. You know, I love that Venusus. And uh, he's been through a lot, including uh, he, he was a survivor from the Colomaris a few years ago. Uh, lost almost his entire tail and his... Uh, his uh, cheek, you could see way down, almost to the bone, from the infection. It was horrible. Uh, someone named him Vinny Cheeks. And uh, we dropped the cheeks, kept the Vinny. But uh, Taiwan Reef, that Taiwan Reef, man, oh, man, beautiful fish. And the Tangerine Tiger, that's also a good, uh, a good guess. 
Let's see. R. Baglio, the Red Cap, Comp 5, the Gar. And you're right, JP, the Red Empress is looking great. And you know, even when, when uh, even when he's harassed, he doesn't doesn't seem to uh, color down. It's an interesting fish. Tangerine Tiger, let's see, Deep Water. Deep Waters love that deep water. You know, the OB, the old man, the OB, I used to call the old man. If you go back to my old videos, there's one called the old man. Lasted a long time, four or five years, and grew him up from a, uh, a fry. And uh, that would, that probably, that should have been on the list. And the fire hap should be on the list. Should definitely be on the list. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, and uh, congratulations to... Um, R. Baglio. Lethronops. Lethronops. See the way those two fish gave each other a little kiss there? <laughs> they are adorable. They're sweet. They're um, not aggressive. I've got two males in this tank. They get along fine. They don't chase each other. They don't try and kill each other, even though there's a little female in there. And, uh, and of course, the red cap, uh, Mr. Photoshop. Uh, that people call. Every time I look at them, I'm just kind of blown away by just the different colors, the kaleidoscope of of colors on his, uh, the patterns in his tail, dorsal and anal fin, um, the color in the cheeks, and of course the red cap. I mean, he's just a just a gorgeous specimen. And I think uh, at some point I'm going to have a tank that is. I'll probably turn this 60. I'll probably pull the red shoulder out of the 60. And, uh, and and end up having this tank be, uh, and I'll pull the uh, the gar out of there too. I have a female gar. If you're in Los Angeles area and you'd like a female gar, Malawi gar, contact me, and we'll make a great deal. I'll probably give it to you. But uh, at any rate, the red cap and and the other the other, the other uh, lethanops in there. I think I'm just going to make that a lethanops tank. I just love the colors. There's that kiss again. And uh, and I just think they're just wonderful fish. So our Baglio, um, you pick. What do you want? You want a bag of, of uh, you want a, a bag of pumice? Uh, you want a, uh, do you want a, a nice big plant from Elite Cichlids? Uh, or would you like a sponge filter? I got this little sponge filter sent to me from Corey. Corey at the Aquarium Co-op sent me a bunch of goodies. Sent me uh, some airline tubing, very supple, so it doesn't get hard and hard to work with. A few other things. He sent me a nice hat, which I'll be wearing, I think, in tomorrow's video. Uh, some Marison, which is one of my favorite meds, Marison. And uh, do you, uh, if you want a filter, I'll send you this little filter, the sponge filter. This is a great filter to... Uh, to have running like behind some rocks or something and then you can pull it out and have an instant quarantine tank it's got a coarse it's got a coarse sponge on it a coarse sponge you can buy these at uh, aquarium co-op at Corey's place it's got a uh, an up you know a tube for the bubbles to go up and I guess your hose your your airline just goes right down there and connects connects to the middle here and then you create you create a pressure a vacuum and then it pulls detritus onto this so you could pull this uh, off give it a good cleaning very easily it's very well designed I don't know if this is a uh, Corey's proprietary design I don't know but at any rate if you want this our Baglio Send me your address and pick what you'd like uh, to ben.o.cichlid at gmail and uh, you guessed correctly. <laughs> and why is that fish? Uh, you know, the temperament, the color, uh, the amount of joy that I get. Every time I sit in front of that tank, it's just, it's just pure joy. It's just enjoyment watching that fish swim around. And, uh, and he never slows down. 
He never slows down. He's just constantly full of energy, uh, constantly uh, moving around, and uh, just an amazing fish. I think I picked him up from Life Fish Direct. I think he was part of a group of Lethronops that I picked from Life Fish Direct. So what do you think? Do you guys agree with my choices? IFG is in the house. Is that what I hear? <laughs> hey, IFG. How you doing, buddy? Uh, IFG actually helped me on that, um, that video I talked about on the fish store tour. He helped me with the uh, thumbnail. And um, he's probably blushing right now. But anyway, thank you for your help, IFG. He's been a, a bit of a, he's been a good friend and a mentor since I first got on Facebook. And he actually convinced me to get in front of the camera. All my videos were just tanks. And he kept bugging me and saying, when are you going to get in front of the camera? When are you going to get in front of the... So anyway, thank you, IFG. So um, let's see here. His channel is making a very strong comeback after that uh, hack that he had. And uh, he's doing very, very well now. Let's see here. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them now. And I will go ahead and take them up. We'll turn this into a, a question and answer period. And I'm going to go back and look over some of your uh, chat comments here. Danny Lopez comes in with uh, 549, and I don't know if that means uh, pounds or if that's uh, Dan, if if what that little symbol means there. But thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much, my friend. Every little bit helps on the super chats. Let me scan back, make sure I don't miss any other ones, and uh, super chats help keep the channel going and uh, pay for the gas when I go out to these uh, to these fish stores. So let's see here. GP, my Red Empress just started coloring up a few weeks ago. Yep. They, uh, once they blow up, they blow up. Beautiful. I mean, they're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's see. Somebody had a question here earlier. Euro. Okay. Thanks, Dan. So that's actually more than, uh, than what that would be in dollars. I think that's probably more than 549 US. I think Euros are still worth more than a one US dollar. So I pr appreciate that. Thank you so much. And let's see here. Someone had a question here that caught my eye. Let me go back and see if I can find it. We answered the question about how long Malawi. Now, if, if one of you know for sure the average lifespan of the Malawis, go ahead and post it. Hey, Ben, I'm planning on purchasing that algae scrubber you mentioned. This is, you is big Salinas. In one of your past episodes, do you still recommend it if I don't see it on your tanks any longer? It's uh, running in the sump, and uh, and it's running. I have two of them running in the sump underneath the tank behind me, and I have one running on the, um, on the 100. And you'll see it featured actually in tomorrow's video. Uh, what I do is when it's time to service it, I, I, I pull it off of the wall and I just leave it, let it lay out and uh, the fish munch on it for a very long time. And uh, it's, it's really, really, I mean, they really go to town on it. They love it. It's uh, nutritious and it removes nitrates. It uh, removes CO2 and it adds oxygen to the tank. So it's all good. It's definitely all good. I do recommend them. Uh, they're not cheap, uh, but... Uh, and there are some ways, some DIY ways of doing it, but um, sometimes some people just want to get a good product and put it in and are willing to pay a little extra because their time, they don't want to put the time, it's fine. Uh, but if you go to Joey's um, King of DIY, he has a video on how to make your own. Uh, it involves, you know, electrical wiring and a bunch of other things. Uh, but, you know, you can DIY one if you want. But uh, the one they sell, it's like a battleship. It's very well made, and it will last you a very long time. So I do recommend them. Santa Monica Filtration is the name of that company. They do not pay me anything. They have sent me, full disclosure, they have sent me 
some of the algae scrubbers in the past at no cost, just to be full disclosure. Uh, somebody threw some money. Hey, GP, for the eight-foot tank uh, cookie jar. <laughs> Thank you, GP. I appreciate that. And you're and you're a uh, moderator. You're you're really uh, you're you're really doing a doing a lot for the channel, my friend. So um, somebody asked, how many fish do I recommend for a thirty? Now, if you're talking cichlids, you know, if you're gonna if if you're gonna go with a thirty-four gallon T-bone, uh, and you're talking uh, cichlids, I wouldn't I wouldn't go with uh, I wouldn't go with peacocks and haps. They're going to get too big too fast. Uh, unless you're planning on getting like a, a, you know, a 60 and, and like I did, then get a get a 100, then get a, you know, uh, unless you have that in your future and are intending to do that, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest uh, cichlids uh, in a 34 unless they were very very young and you were just going to grow them up to the point where you graduate them out and. Uh, that being said, you could get some rams if you want cichlids. You know, you get some New World or South American, Central Americans, get some rams. Rams are beautiful. Uh, golden rams, blue rams, uh, go beautiful fish. Uh, very interesting way of, of swimming with a start-stop. Uh, beautiful colors in the body, just gorgeous fish, rams. Uh, you can get maybe some of those, what they call shellies, you know, the smaller cichlids who... Uh, you know, they claim these, these abandoned shells as their homes. Those are fun. Uh, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go into anything like a, a Taiwan Reef or, a, a, you know, a Venusis. Uh, you know, even the smaller, you know, even your Bicolor 500 eventually will probably feel a little bit cramped in a 34. So, um, or you can just make it a nice planted tank. And put some neons and some angels in there, and uh, you know, put some nice plants, and that could be you, be real nice that way. So let's see what else we got here. Po seaweed, I like my sponge filter from Corey. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It's a it's a nice coarse sponge, and uh, the reason I like it, I keep a few sponges in the sump. And so they have some beneficial bacteria, uh, and they can, um, and they can immediately just go into a, a hospital tank or a quarantine tank if I need to do that. So I always keep a few of them floating around. Shen Kishava KJ going through videos and saw you live. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Always, always welcome to uh, new viewers. Here we go. Edward W. Malawi average lifespan is about five to ten years, depending on the species and conditions. There you go. And I wonder how different that is between in the wild versus in the uh, in the tank, because I think in the tank it's a it's a bit short. It'll probably be closer to the uh, closer to the five year. And that's been my experience has been uh, in the five year, assuming that they. Were a year or two when I bought them, the last three to three to five years, and uh, they start to uh, start to decline. Eight foot glass box with water indoors makes me very nervous. <laughs> I get it, Donald. I'm gonna try and have my next set of tanks uh, be in an actual fish room, where it's like a basement. So that even if one of them was to burst, the water would just go on a concrete floor and then drain out, because it is it's 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 scary. And I've gotten I've gotten some pretty big puddles on this wood floor behind me, especially when I was first setting up this sump and I didn't really understand, uh, you know the the water you know the the water mechanics. I, I didn't get it, and uh, I made I made some big puddles. So uh, I get it, I get it. Texas Fish Room, welcome. I'm glad you can make it, my friend. Old hippie mailman. <laughs> old hippie mailman. <laughs> Sounds like a character on a TV program. The old hippie mailman. 
And uh, you want to know how to get blackbeard algae off the edges of my plants. Is that real plants or artificial plants? Because boy, oh boy, if you have some of those silk artificial plants and you get black algae, forget about it. It just, get, it just gets destroyed. Um, I imagine you could soak... You could soak it in with a little bit of uh, maybe a teaspoon of bleach in a five-gallon bucket and and then uh, soak it for 24 hours, uh, like I talk about in one of my videos called uh, They Look Like New. That's the name of the video, I think. It's called They Look Like New. And you can soak for 24 hours, uh, one tablespoon of bleach. And then when you pull them out, uh, you know, give it a good fresh water rinse before you handle them. Don't get bleach on your hands. And then when you pull them out, Gently scrape them. It should come off easily. I also have had uh, common plecos that ate black algae, believe it or not. I was told they wouldn't. I've talked about this before. I had a pleco that did eat the black algae. And so you might get lucky with a green pleco. That's voracious. But, uh, you know, overnight soaking in bleach. And then what I do is after I give it a good rinse in fresh water, scrape it down. I then soak it overnight again with some water conditioner like Prime. And um, then it's and then I then it's pretty safe. It's safe to put back in your tank. You're not going to have any adverse effect. The truth is, if I understand it correctly, uh, bleach uh, gases off, so it, it's not really dangerous after a certain amount of time. That's actually how you recharge uh, pyrogen. You use a a, a, ble a bleach to water ratio, and um, and then after that you soak it in uh, water with water conditioner. So, uh, see if that works. See if that helps. Edward has a five-year-old living stone eye. Wow. That's, uh, oh no, hi, Edward. I currently, that's GP. Oh my God. How big is he? He's got to be, he's got to be pushing 10 inches at least. And they get really thick. Let's see. Shanene, hey Ben, found a little 10 gallon on the side of the road with a sponge filter, all the accessories. I want to cycle it by dumping dirty water from my filter, what, from my filter, my other thing. Um, the water, you know, the, the water column doesn't, it has a very small amount, but I don't think enough beneficial bacteria to cycle. You're going to need either some filter material from an established tank and uh, maybe do that together with a little bit of the quick start products like your Fritz Turbo, things like that. I use a combination of things and then introduce fish gradually. If you found it on the side of the road, I would suggest that you consider resealing it. Just Google resealing an aquarium or resealing a fish tank. Again, Joey, the king of DIY, has a, a video on how to do it. It's very easy, very easy to do, but I would consider resealing that tank because there's a reason it's on the side of the road. Someone might have just gave up and uh, or it belonged to a kid that moved out and the parents don't want to mess with it, so they stuck it out there. But it might have been leaking. And they just said, forget it, we're not going to mess with it. Throw it out there, someone will pick it up. So I would uh, water test it for about 48 hours, make sure there's no leaks. But uh, just as a precaution, I'd reseal it anyway because you don't know how, how old it is. Now, sometimes tanks on the bottom will show a date. If it's not leaking and the date, let's say, is within five years, you're probably okay for another five years. Usually it's every 10 years that they suggest you consider resealing a tank. And uh, that's a good find. Candy shared the uh, link to Santa Monica Filtration. Uh, tell them that Ben Ochart sent you and that you want the Ben Ochart discount. There's no such thing as a Ben Ochart discount, but go ahead and you know bust their chops anyway. <laughs> And uh, Cat Sailor comes in with nine ninety nine. Hey, Cat Sailor, thank you so much. When you set up a quarantine tank, do you leave it set up with water, but no fish after the issues have been resolved? Um, I have a thirty gallon tank that is technically a quarantine tank, and I leave it set up all the time. That's so that when I receive new fish, or if a fish looks sick or a fish has been beaten up or something and needs to go recover, I can put them in the 30 gallon. I currently have a, um, a bristle nose in there, an albino bristle nose that I'm fattening up. Uh, he was living in the 100, but wasn't able to get to food fast enough. So he was getting 
too skinny for my taste. So I put him in the in the 30. He's keeping the 30, um, you know, bio bio alive and uh, with waste. And uh, I'm dropping food in there and algae wafers. And uh, he's getting nice and plump. And so I'll probably leave him in there for a while. But uh, to answer your question, yes. If you uh, set up a good size one, you might as well leave it set up. Uh, some people do what's called ghost feeding. They'll drop a little food, a food in once or twice a week if there's no fish in it, just to have something decaying. And by decaying, it's creating ammonia. And, uh, and of course, that goes to nitrite and nitrate. So you have a, a tank that continues the cycle and the bacteria is being fed. Uh, some people say you don't need to do that, that the bacteria will do fine. So there's two schools of thinking on that. I was ghost feeding an empty tank for a while, and when I put fish in it, it was fine. Uh, nobody showed any signs of stress. I'd say having a fish like a, a small pleco in a quarantine tank is a good idea. When I set up an emergency tank, just let's say that I just got some fish and another fish is looking sick and I need another quarantine tank, I have a 10 gallon uh, acrylic tank and I fill it halfway with tank water for pH purposes and then half with treated tap water. So it's like a 50% water change and I throw in a, uh, a sponge filter from, you know, that's, that's been in the sump. So I get an instantly cycled tank. I might even throw in a handful of bio balls or um, of some of the, um, some of the NO3 Brightwell cubes. You know, just throw some stuff in there that I know has beneficial bacteria on it. And the fish are never stressed. They go in it and it's like business as usual. They don't, they don't, get clam fins, they don't hang out in the corner, they, they swim around like normal, they eat, and they recover. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Probably gave you more data than you needed. So let's see here. David Kushner from sunny South Africa. It's almost 8 p.m. now. Love the channel. Thanks for what you do for this wonderful hobby. Thank you, David. I appreciate that very much. It's uh, comments like that that keep me fired up, my friend. Pat Morris, you know the Exo, uh, Exochromus ingenis, uh, another fish that should have been on the list, a fish I picked up from uh, Josh Cunningham at Cunningham Cichlids. Beautiful fish. Uh, love that fish. Uh, a great attitude. Again, just kind of a fish that's content to just sort of swim around and just kind of be goofy. He doesn't really chase anybody. Supposedly has very powerful jaws, but uh, doesn't really use them on anybody. Just kind of stays out of, out of everybody's way, just kind of drifts around. And um, he's a little bit like the uh, Buchachromus uh, strigatus, you know, just kind of swimming around and content and kind of goofy. Very cute fish. Looking forward to seeing him get more blue in the body. Has the three spots, so they call him the three spot torpedo. Uh, so he'll have a combination of gold and blue. It'll be very pretty. Uh, Sheena Kishava KJ, female cichlid, has abandoned babies with egg sacs. Um, not an area, I'm, I'm not really a breeder or that, if, if some of you are on here know that and can answer that question about a mother that's abandoned the babies with egg sacs. I know people put them in tumblers, but I think those tumblers are more for when they're in the egg, uh, all egg, not, not swimmers with egg sacs. Um, not really sure what to do there, except... I mean, let them let them develop, uh, you know, grind up some flake food and drop it in and hope they eat it. Not really an area that I'm I'm uh, super familiar with. That living stone is uh, over 10 inches. Yeah, I'd imagine that big and that that old must be an impressive fish. Michael Nicholas in Philly, 96 degrees. And, you know, 96 degrees there is very different from 96 here in Los Angeles. It's very dry here. 
you're going to dehydrate a lot faster there. That humidity is brutal. And uh, I understand it's going to be like that in Tennessee. Not, not something I'm looking forward to, but not as bad as like Florida. Chevy Fish, when I find a discarded aquarium, I knock on the door and ask the people about it. Not a bad idea, you know? Hey, do you mind if I take that tank? And uh, how you doing? And did you have any problems? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know, what did they have in it? Did they have a turtle in it? Reptiles? A snake? You know, I, was it fish? What happened? Why are they giving it away? Those, you know, yeah, for sure. Malawi Lake 40, good afternoon, fish heads. <laughs> That's us. Tim Carter, how do you use the pre-sponge filter on the FX6? I think you said you drilled holes in the black tube. What size holes and how many? Uh, there's a whole video on that, uh, Tim Carter. And uh, I took the grill, the intake grill, I took that off. And... Um, and then I, I just did alternating, maybe maybe 10, uh, 1 eighth inch, 10, 1 eighth inch holes with a drill. I think in hindsight, maybe capping the bottom might not be a bad idea. That way I'll get more pressure out of the holes. I might just cap that bottom, even though having the bottom open is probably helping to hold the sponge up. The sponge that they sell at the aquarium co-op, which is where I bought it, Aquarium Co-op. <laughs> That's where I bought it. And uh, the opening uh, for the tube is a little bit bigger than the actual uh, intake tube that comes with the FX6. So uh, I also had to put a, uh, a piece, I, I took a piece of hose from an old Sun Sun filter. I had some extra hose and I and I cut it and I sliced it down the side and I put it over over the uh, over the intake tube. So it, it made it, it made it uh, wider it made it you know bigger now that the sponge fits on there between that and the and the pressure pulling from the bottom it stays in place you don't want it slipping off also keep it a little bit off the bottom because uh, otherwise it'll suck in some sand even though it will stop sand from getting in i've noticed because when i rinse it uh sand falls out of it so sand isn't i don't think too much sand is getting in there if fish spit on it uh, I love it because it'll catch food and then the fish come and eat the food off the sponge. So the food doesn't go right into the filter like it would if I just had the grill with the openings. The food would just go right into the uh, canister. Because of that, you're able to go a lot longer between canister servicing because you're not getting so much waste in there. And uh, <clears throat> I have a whole video on it. If you go to my FX6 playlist, I have a thing called the FX6 playlist. Look for that and uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Malawi Lake 40, shout out from New Orleans. Uh, hey, go to Cafe Du Monde and uh, have a cup of coffee. Uh, Cafe Du Monde, one of my favorite spots. I love it down there, down by the canal. Also Mother's, Mother's Coffee Shop. Boy, I love that place. Um... Let's see here. Peplin Creek Aquatics. Resealing is a lot easier than it seems. Just make sure you get all the old silicone, I guess that's off, and clean glass well before putting the new silicone down. Yes. Now, but a word of warning. Don't pull... Don't pull the material out that's between the sheets of glass. Stay away from that. And what I did is I got a, a razor blade holder and you just do a nice clean slice one way and then the other way and then you just pull that old sealant out. But don't get between the sheets because that's what's holding the glass together. So you don't want to cut that up. And uh, if, you go to, uh, if you go to the King of DIY, just Google resealing a fish tank uh, he shows you how to put down the masking tape so you get a nice clean uh, edge to the silicone and um, and make up your mind ahead of time whether you want to use black silicone or clear uh, don't do clear and then decide you want black 
I like the black because it doesn't show any algae or discoloring over time. And I decided that I liked the black after I had already sealed with the clear. So um, make up your mind ahead of time. <laughs> Have a shop vac because, and that way, and just be shop vacing so you're getting all the dust and particles so that you don't trap some of the old stuff, you know, underneath the new silicone because that, that'll be a weak spot in the seal. So, and yes, it's not that hard. The uh, Joey's video is pretty easy, the King of DIY video. Test PP, test PP, VZ. A fish in a community tank is scared to come out and get food. What can I do for it? Well, chances are when the lights are out um, and the tank is calmed down, you're probably coming out and eating. You can wait him out because eventually he's going to get hungry and come out and eat. You can see who's harassing him and maybe put that person, you know, that, that fish in a timeout for a little while. Uh, maybe in a net, you know, put him inside one of those little box nets. And, uh, or you can take the fish that's really scared and put him in a box net, feed him there for a little bit, let him get some strength, uh, put on some weight. It's a tough one, you know, and, and is he sick? Could be sick, could have an intestinal issue. Uh, you know, are the fins, cla are the fins clasped? You know, what, what's going on? I mean, there's different things here to consider. Uh, yeah, put them in a breeder box, uh, Peplin Creek Aquatics. Yeah, put them in something where you can be, where you can feel uh, safe. Oh, you're you're talking about the little babies, uh, with with the with the sacks. Put them in a breeder box. Yeah, put them in a little breeder box that has the aquarium water in it circulating through. That'll be good. Let's see here. That's good. You folks are helping her out with those little wigglers. I appreciate that. That's right, you only tumble eggs. Yeah, yeah, GP, I agree. I mean, that black silicone, you know, you can get algae, you can get things like that. Maybe you treat the tank with a medication, all of a sudden your your clear silicone is, is stained and it looks nasty. Uh, sometimes some algae can uh, grow a little under it and you can't quite scrape it off. So, uh, yeah, the black silicone has been my silicone of choice. Uh, T-Bone, I've had uh, plecos with Corydoras. I didn't really have a problem. I imagine if the pleco is large, you could have a problem. Plecos that are large can be very, very aggressive. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll stick to fish. They'll try and, and eat the slime coat off of them. If a fish is injured, they'll attach to it and uh, finish it off. Uh, they, um, when I've had fish die, I've found plecos uh, feeding on them. I mean, so they are, you know, carnivorous. So, um, yeah, I would, uh, if the pleco is small, you know, I think you'd be okay. A very large pleco would be, could be dangerous, I guess. I have a very large pleco in the tank behind me. And uh, nobody messes with him. He's like an armored, armored, uh, armored tank. Edward W. I have to remove old setups every time I buy a used tank. Yeah. Some of us have. Uh, what is it called? The uh, tank syndrome. Multiple M M M T S. Multiple tank syndrome. We got to get more tanks. Ben, looking ripped, going to have to have a push-up contest with Joey. <laughs> he might beat me. I mean, he's pretty big on, you know, he has the advantage. Depends how big his legs are. You see, I have, I have, uh, I ride bikes, so I have a lot of weight in my legs. And uh, he might beat me. I could probably bang out 40 without a problem, but uh, he could probably do more than that. Let's see here. All right. Okay. It looks like we're on the hour, unless anyone has anything else to say. If I missed a super chat, I am sorry. I thought I got all of them, and I thank those of you who uh, chipped in. And I did get Cat Sailor and GP. I got you. Okay. And I think I got all of you. And very, very good. Okay. 
So don't forget to stop by the store and pick up those commem commemorative mugs. I'm going to be adding one more to, I'm going to put the red, uh, the ruby red on a mug. That fish was just so spectacular. I'm going to try and find a picture of the old man, my old OB. I'm going to put him on a mug too. And uh, let's take a look at the fish cam. Now that, that picture you're seeing right there is with the, uh, that's with the cam, the old cam that I used to use for my live streams. Now I'm going to step aside here and I'm going to have you look at the tank with the new camera. And you can see the uh, difference in the picture. And you can tell me about the picture quality difference. So that's with the old cam. And that's the new camera. So um, that's what your uh, super chats and purchases at the Amazon store and at the uh, at the Teespring store help to finance things like that. And I thank everybody that supports the channel that way. And I also thank all of you just showing up. I know there's a lot of things you could be doing today on a Saturday. I really appreciate you. And thank you to my wonderful moderators, the best ones on YouTube for sure. And uh, with that, my friends, I think I'm going to go ahead and end off. Have a wonderful weekend and check out the video tomorrow on, uh, on water changes, why I do them. It's going to be different from why you think. It's about a lot more than just nitrate control. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.